Welcome to part 17 of ASP.NET MVC Core Tutorials. On this part we are going to learn how to configure Entity Framework Core. Until now we have some data which we have used to display some information to our views. But we have used mocks, so no real implementation. On this part we are going to learn how to get data from a real database and we will make the necessary changes for that. To get data from the database we will use Entity Framework Core. To get started with Entity Framework Core we need to add some packages to our project.json file. So inside the dependencies section, we add our three packages. And you see that when you add the packages and save the file, a restoring will be started. So the packages are downloaded and configured. The first package, which is SQL Server, is a data provider package. It allows us to work with Entity Framework Core in combination with SQL Server. The second one, which is a tools package, Add support for tooling like creating a database, migrations, and so on. The third one, which is the configuration.json package, it is not really necessary for Entity Framework Core, but we need it to read the database configuration connection string. Also, on the tools section, you need to add Entity Framework Core tools configuration. After we have added the necessary packages, we are going to create a database context file, or as we name it, updb context file. We are going to create it in our data folder so for that let us just add a new class and we name it updbcontext.cs this class needs to inherit from dbcontext and dbcontext belongs to entity framework core namespace the dbcontext class comes with entity framework core package so let us create the constructor for this class by shortcut ctr and double tab and inside the application dbcontext we add the DB context options with up DB context and we write here options. This should inherit from the base, which means inherits from DB context by using the options. So far, so good. So, so now we have added the constructor, and the next step is to add the DB sets. So we have the drinks DB set for the drink model and we have the categories db set for the category model but if we need to work with a database we always need a connection string to that database typically in a dotnet core application we put it in a new json file so in our root project we are going to create our new configuration file which is app settings and you select here asp.net configuration file and by default the name is upsettings.json. We add it and we see that by default it comes with a connection strings property and inside the connection strings we have the default connection. From the default connection string all you need to change is the database name and here we are going to write drink and go and this is the name that our database will have and we save the file. Now we have created the connection string but we need to read it and the best place would be the startup class. First thing we need to do is that we need to create a I configuration root instance. So for that we add a private property at the top of the class. The I configuration root belongs to Microsoft extensions configuration. So we import that one. The I configuration root basically represents the entry point to configuration data. Next we add a constructor for the startup class and you already know the CTR shortcut and we pass as parameter iHost environment interface. This gives me information about the hosting environment. We paste some code to our constructor. The first line interchases the configuration builder and we point it using set base path method to the root of the application. The second one we point it to the JSON configuration file and last we pass the configuration using the build method. Next we need to re register services in our configuration services method. So we are going to register our application DB context as a service. So inside configuration services at the top, we add our new configuration. We are going to first import the app DB context file, and then we are going to import entity framework core as well. So until now we have made all the necessary configurations. We have added all the necessary nugget packages, which we need to configure entity framework core to an ASP.NET MVC Core application. On the next part, 
we are going to replace the mock repositories with real repositories. So thank you for watching and see you on the next part.